Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of North Light Images, and in this short video I'm just going to talk a bit about paper types, third-party papers, and finding profiles for it. Now, if you've seen any of my stuff about printing, you'll know that I say that for the best results for making your prints, whatever size they are, you ideally want ICC printer profiles to use with the printer driver when you're printing. Um, it just makes things more consistent, more accurate, and almost always of better quality. Um, there's a minor exception if you're printing black and white sometimes, but I'm just talking about good quality printing. Now, if you get a printer from Epson or Canon, if you get one of the better printers, then you'll find that there are profiles available for all of their media. Important thing to remember here is that Canon and Epson do not make their own papers in general. That means that if you find a particular Epson paper, that paper or something very, very similar to it is going to be available elsewhere under a different name. Now, there are cheap papers as well, and some of those do not match up with any of the sort of OEM original equipment equipment manufacturer, so Canon, Epson, they don't really matter. So if you're going for really cheap papers, you're going to have to experiment a bit, make your own profiles, because really cheap papers in general, well, you don't know what the quality of them, you don't know how long they're going to last, but really cheap papers almost never have profiles available. Now, the profiles, just small data files that you download, install on your PC or on your Mac, and they take care of all of that. You don't need to know anything more about them. I've got lots of videos covering aspects of this, but this is just about if you're looking for profiles for third party papers. Now, the best one is if you go to a paper, and I say the Canon or the Epson one, but you might find you've got a Canon paper and a Canon printer. You go to the Canon website and there's no profile for it. That's because they don't produce them for all printers. So for Epson, for example, you might get the Epson ET8550, an ink tank printer, which I know a lot of people use. I tested it on a great printer, but very few profiles are available. Some profiles get installed when you first set up the printer, but for, there are papers, Epson papers, which are just not supported by it. Now, if you look at one of my reviews for the printer you're interested in, or that printer type, if you look at that, you'll find that I've actually made lots of profiles, and the profiles I do make available on request for people. You have to look at the written articles for the full list of all the ones I've created. So, you know, if you can find a profile, that's great. Some paper suppliers will provide profiles. So I know some profile, uh, some paper suppliers here in the UK who will actually supply profiles for printers like the ET8550, Canon Pro 200, 300, whatever. The, the profiles are available. That's great. Some of them will actually, they may not have the profiles available, but they will make profiles for you if you buy some paper off them. So you buy some paper off them, you print a test target, you send that off to them and they send you a link to download a profile. And that's, you've got a custom profile made. That's great. But what about if uh, there aren't any profiles and the paper you want to use uh, hasn't any available? It could be a paper. Now, the reason I'm thinking is because somebody asked me this morning about Hannah papers. They wanted to use a particular Hannah paper and they couldn't find any profiles. Now, for some reason, known to themselves, Hannah Muller have decided that they don't support the 8550. This was the particular printer that's being asked about. They said that it's not supported and they don't have profiles for it. Now, this could change at any point, so it's always worth checking the websites just to see. But, so I've got what are very nice papers, but I can't really get the best out of if I want to use those Hannah Miller papers on something like this Epson P5000 here, big printer, 17-inch printer, roll printer and everything, if I want to use that, that's quite likely because it's a relatively high-end printer, something similar would be like a Canon Pro 1000, where Hannah Miller will have profiles available for it, but they may not have what you want. What are you to do about it? Well, um, I always say if you're going to get a new printer, 
you get the printer first and decide on the paper later. Deciding on your paper and then getting a printer because you think it's a great printer without knowing whether the two work together is a recipe for problems. And this is, yeah, I get asked this quite often. Uh, you know, somebody goes, I've got such and such a paper. I want to use it with that printer. Well, you can't, or there are no profiles. But are you sure there's no profiles? And this is the bit where um, technically you need a profile per paper, per printer model. In reality, there are only a limited number of specialist paper makers and coaters of out there. And they sell, some of the big names, they sell papers to companies who will put their own name on them. So you get a box of Brand X paper uh, from a, a well-known supplier and it's branded. They've got a wide range of papers and you look at them and these papers were not made by them. They're, they're not paper makers. So that suggests there might be profiles available. So if you want to find profiles for a paper that you've got, and this goes for international ones as well. I tested some papers from the States and out of about four or five papers, at least four of them were available under different names here in the UK. Not all, but so. So you go to look at the specifications, find um, a paper supplier, and I'll put a few in the, in the notes to this. Find a paper supplier that has a paper similar to what you want. What do I mean by similar? Well, ideally the GSM grams per square meter uh, will number will be the same. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same. I have found identical papers and I know they're identical papers made by this. They're in different boxes from different companies, but one was a 285 gram and one was 290 or something like that. So remember that you're dealing with marketing here a bit. So you want something that's broadly similar. Then go through the type, look at the papers. If need be, look at the specifications. Thing to look for is maybe the thickness in whatever units and the whiteness. Now the whiteness will come in a variety of different units if it's present at all. The fact that the same units are used in the paper that you've got, your mystery paper, and the paper that you've got listed by a supplier who has profiles would suggest they're similar. Now, you're going to have to experiment. Now, this flies against the sort of, oh, you absolutely need a profile. Profiles these days, because printers are a lot better, profiles have a lot less work to do than they used to have to do. Now, this is years ago, both of these pictures are years ago, where I made custom profiles. for That's uh, a huge, great print I made. Um, it's about 47 feet long, if I remember right. That's printed on canvas. I made a profile for that. Now, the printer that that was printed on was this one. It's Canon IPF 8300. And this is what's in my other print room. Um, with much less space in there at the moment. It's packed full of stuff. I haven't had that printer here for a while, uh, but I made profiles for that. Some profiles were available. But in looking, if I wanted a, a profile, at this level, I would make one. But if I'm talking about a small desktop printer, something like an ET8500, um, the Canon G series, although they have problems with Macs, uh, that's covered in one of my reviews, that serious color management problems with the G series, small Canon printers, but the better Canon printers, say a Pro 200, Pro 300, something like that. If I look at the paper specifications of this paper that I've got, now it may be that I've got a perfect, yeah, an identical paper here in the UK. You're not in the UK. To import the paper will cost you know, far too much, make it far too expensive, but you've got a good paper. If you can find a match, have a go. The thing is you're gonna have to experiment. Um, as I say, ideally you would have the correct profile, but these days there is much less difference in profiles. So it's perfectly okay to get a profile that you think is from a paper that seems very similar, print something like this test image and see what it comes out like. You may need to try two or three of them, but at least it's a way of potentially finding ICC profiles for the printer you've got. Now, I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you've got any questions, please do ask, because it's people's questions that give me ideas for things like this. Um, 
myself, I would build a profile, but then I've got all the kit and the software to do it. Um, I would ideally buy paper from someone who provides profiles in that case, if, if I didn't, wasn't able to do them myself. But sometimes, you know, situation is you've got a paper, you've got an excellent paper, you've just got no profiles for your particular printer. Bit of lateral thinking, looking at similar stuff. And the key thing to remember is there are only so many companies actually make and do the coating for paper and stuff. Um, yes, you might be able to do better. Will anyone notice? Maybe not. Anyway, I hope that's been of help. Uh, as I say, let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel, pass it on, share it or whatever. That is greatly appreciated. Thanks and bye.